to get from the side of that stage to that X, it felt like a mile. <laughs> Me and all the kids, we were standing off to the side, and we were so nervous. I think the very first judge I ever held, and I just remember him taking almost like a deep breath, like, oh, really? <laughs> Song. I have to go out there and give it my all with this one song. We were all praying that he would miss a note. But the moment that I stepped out on that stage, it was just extremely special to get to perform a song to my children in front of the world. And I got to tell them how much I love them.
for these kids. By the way, we have a hero family like that here. This, this is so awesome. What they got. like that because I thought about you guys with this, but you know what? You, the, if you watch that, as a matter of fact, for some of you, some of what Michael was saying might have been a little strange, right? It might have been. I don't know Michael, I don't know his background, I, and I'm not, I didn't show you this, you might want to find something about my I'm not saying that. When I was, I was impressed about what I wanted to preach you this morning that God gave to me. It's really important, it's in Ephesians chapter 6. Matter of fact, guys, let me know this service. I'm going to take out a bunch of the intro stuff on Ephesians. You go study it. But here's the deal. Something Michael knows that you need to know. You need to know it today. You need to confess it. You need to admit it. You need to know this. Really, seriously, come on. We need to confess this. The battle, you've got one going on every single day. The battle... You have enemies, by the way, right? Some of you here, you're so wonderful, you're so sweet, you say, man, I ain't got no enemies. Yes, you do. <laughs> the Word of God says you do. You have enemies. And every day you get up, every day you go to sleep, 24-7, 365, there's a battle going on. Here's the deal, though, that Michael gets. The battle's not here. It's there. The battle's not here. It's there. Ephesians chapter 6, grab a Bible, open up, let's go to it. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to begin tackling this at verse 10. Um, while you're doing this, let me give you just some quick introductory, because I said I'm going to cut a bunch out there. I like to like going to Ephesians. Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. He's in prison when he's writing it, okay? He's writing to Gentiles, not Jews. He's explaining to them, it's really cool, you need to read up to chapter 6. The only reason I'm doing this little bit of context is because it's kind of almost weird how he finishes up, but it's really not when you get what he's saying. So he says to these people, he explains to them how they've been brought into Israel because they're Gentiles, right? Anybody here this morning is Jew? Jewish descendancy at all? Anybody? No. So we're Gentiles, right? So, so what Paul is saying here to these people is kind of being said to us. They were brought in through Jesus to gain the inheritance of Israel, right? We were brought in through Jesus Christ. He's explaining that. He's telling them about going from uh, darkness into life and how they've been changed from death and brought to life. And then he goes into, many of you know, <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5, uh, where he talks about uh, family, right? Uh, he talks about wives and husbands. It's the one everybody knows about wives, submit, respect your husbands. By the way, I'm not preaching chapter 5. I, I went out at the first service and, and, got, and they wouldn't care that I said that, but somebody chewed me out about chapter 5. Totally good with that, and the way they went about it was great. I'm not preaching chapter 5. Chapter 5 is about family. That's all I want to point out to you. It, and chapter 5 is where it says about wives submitting and respecting their husbands. Husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church and dying for them. Talks about children and parents, right? Children uh, respecting their parents, honoring their parents. Fathers, don't exasperate your children. Depending on the translation you use. Don't drive them to anger. Don't drive them to anger. It talks about those relationships. And then it goes into slaves and masters, which is really about... Uh, in a lot of ways, our work relationships. Slavery master that Paul was addressing was not on racial lines, but on usually financial lines. People who were indebted to other people. And he was talking about mutual respect. Slaves working, working hard. About the masters being respectful and, and treating them decent. There, there. He's talking about all that. And then in verse 10 of chapter 6, let's go at it. Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. It's almost like, what's this have to do with family work relationships, right? Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I want you to read verse 12 with me. I want, I want you to read verse 12. Um, uh, all of us together, right? And then you can stop at 13. I'll keep reading. Verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Let me just stop there. Your battle, your war, your waging every single day, the battle you're in, it's not here. It's there. And we're spending almost all our time, you know how I know this stuff? Some of you are thinking, hey, he knows me. He knows what I... No. 
I've done this many times. <laughs> Woke up in the middle of the battle and found out I'm on the wrong battlefield. Because I, I, one of the things I want to do just real quick is what that, what's it look like when we're on the wrong battlefield? What's it look like when we're on the right battlefield, right? I think, I think you know. I think you can figure it out. It's not real complicated, right? But here's the deal. The battle's not here, it's there. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. <laughs> we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Most of us here today spend most of our week wrestling with flesh and blood. If you're like me, you fix your love to do things, fix problems. Matter of fact, some of you heard my sermon, right? Tammy, did you want to say something or are you just hallelujah? I have, I have <laughs> Go ahead. I have testimony. Amen. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this very first, I, we were on vacation out east, and uh -huh. my husband is not saved. And yes. the whole time we were on vacation, I was praying, Lord, I really want to go to church on Sunday, but I know my husband's not going to want to go to church. And, you know, can you please make it so I can go to church? And he's happy about it and not resentful. And um, so on Friday night, I was praying about that, and I had that, a dream that night. And in my dream, Jesus was beside me, and we were fighting. And I, he was beside me, and I was praying and praying, and he was just beside me, and he said, your, your prayers are weak. He said, you need to get more in the Word. To pray against Satan, you need to get in the Word. You need to have the Word like this. He said, you need to memorize Ephesians 6. Wow. And he told me that in my dream. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah. So the next morning I woke up, and I looked at the Gideon Bible, and the, the, <laughs> my Bible was in the car, you know. The, we're that was a little Bible, you know. And I, like, I start reading Ephesians 6 over and over and over again. And the next morning was Sunday, and I, you know, very gently and carefully said to Steve, Steve, do you, would you mind if I go to a church today? And, he, and he's like, no problem. I'll go fill the car with gas and go put these postcards in the post office. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> go to church today. He's not going to be mad about it. And um, we didn't know what church to go to. So we're driving along, and um, he says, well, what church do you want to go to? I don't know, you know, what's in it. all the time there's these billboards, because we were on Chincoteague Ch Island, oh, all the way across the swamp, and there were all these billboards for these different churches, Catholic churches, blah, 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 and finally there was this one, it was about an island church, and I was like, oh, I'm all about islands, so let's go to this island church, and we walk in, and the pastor says, open up to Ephesians 6, oh, and the whole sermon was about Ephesians 6, wow. and yeah, so, so so you know where the battlefield is. Absolutely. Thank you, Tammy. And that's what Jesus was telling me in the dream. He was saying, you need to be in the word, and your prayers need to be more powerful with the word to fight the And we got to, and that's the deal, is we got to be specific about where this battle is. Yeah. And God's going to do miracles like that to let you know where you're fighting about. Yep. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I've been here. I've done it. I struggle every week with wanting to fight in the flesh and blood. Most weeks, I think I'm pretty good at it. But we don't. We don't wrestle with. We don't struggle with. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the dark world of the kingdom. Your battle's not here. It's there. And uh, so here's here's some of the. The things that I'm thinking when it comes to how you know, because I, I truly, this is, here's the deal. Next week, we're going to talk about who the enemy is, right? And we're going to talk about tools that, that God gives us to defeat the enemy. The Word of God, Tammy, is one of them, okay? But today, all Scott told me we're supposed to do is to know that the battle's not here. It's there. That, that, that's, we got to confess that today. And if you're like me, there's a bunch of us. And and uh, and uh, when I describe being on the wrong battlefield, if I can do it, thinking, thinking through my notes here. <laughs> See, here's the deal, right? Um, because it's uh, the we our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in, in the heavenly realms. Um, uh, I even was, and you check this out, like that word wrestle, right? It's the only time it's used in the New Testament, and it means, listen to this, a contest between two in which each endeavors. One of the reasons I'm showing you this is when you're on the wrong battlefield, this is what you're doing to the wrong enemy, okay? This is what you're doing to the wrong enemy. A contest between two in which each endeavors to throw the other and which is decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hands or 
around his neck. <laughs> you can feel that, Brother Gary? <laughs> He's been in a battle that's not, Gary, I'm, it's your all's thing, right? So I don't get touched. They've been robbed twice their business in the last couple of weeks. I mean, serious business. Cops are really on this now because they were robbed last night again. The, the problem with this situation is evil in this world. The battle's not here, it's there. And on the right battlefield, we get to go, go get them, God. <laughs> go get them, God. We're praying for you. So I know they're in that battle today. Maybe you're in one of those today. You're like, what's this all about? What's going on in my world? See, when you're on the wrong battlefield, you end up fighting the wrong enemy. That's one of the things that happened. I tried to think this through. I love history. And I've studied a lot of, uh, you know, growing up on the East Coast, Revolutionary War, Civil War. Sven was reminding me after second service this morning. He, re he remembered uh, some stuff from World War II. But I was like, I searched far and wide for a soldier that ended up on the wrong battlefield, right, fighting the wrong battle. Because what I know of the Revolutionary and the Civil War, not modern warfare, things would get so confusing. Guys would end up on a battlefield without their commanders, without their <coughs> platoons, and not even knowing who the enemy was. Can you imagine that? What happens in those situations? The anxiety is going to go up. The stress is going to go up. The fear is going to go up. The anger is going to go up. The hurt. You know, all this stuff's going to go up. Sven was reminding me after, and I've read some of those stories about how after World War II, some of the Japanese were on remote islands and stuff and went on fighting the war for decades after World War II. Any of you read those stories? <laughs> They're fighting a battle that wasn't even there. You know what I mean? When you're on the wrong battlefield, what you experience is, is, is anxiety and anxiousness and anger and fear and broken relationships and worry and and, and, and you're fighting the wrong people. You're not fighting your spouse. You're not fighting your kids. Kids, you're not fighting your parents. You're not fighting your boss. Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You may have enemy problems with them. They're not the enemy. Those bad guys. <laughs> They're not the enemy. The battle's not here. The battle's there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of this dark world. So that's what the battlefield, when you're on the wrong one, looks like. It's got to look that way because the commander's not there. The, the, the troops aren't there to help out. Loneliness kicks in and all kinds of other stuff. And I don't mean to be generalized. Some of you going through stuff, I'm not even touching on that. I'm just saying when I read the Word of God, I believe that many of us need to confess we're doing a whole bunch of our fighting and warfare on the wrong battlefields. And I really think that those of us who need to confess that today, we're going to save us a whole lot of heartache and trouble and lack of peace and problems in this world by doing that today. By saying, hey, <clears throat> when you're on the right battlefield, wow, right? The command of the general, the Lord of hosts of heaven will be there. Matter of fact, I think one of the things you experience, not why I'm, I'm not, some of you experience a lack of peace for all kinds of reasons, but I, I'm simply talking about being on the wrong battlefield. When you're fighting here in the flesh and blood, you're going to be tired, you're going to be exhausted. A lot of us here today are totally beat up simply because we're on the wrong battlefield. And we're fighting, you know, when you're on the wrong battlefield, you're fighting your own strength. The commander's not there, the troops aren't there. You're fighting for yourself in your own strength. And peace isn't there. On the right battlefield, the commander's there. The Lord of hosts, the commander of the army, reminded me of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, right? Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's the right battlefield. This Michael knew the right battlefield. He's praying for his kids, right? Because his first response was to pray for his kids. And to pray against the forces of darkness and their influence on his kids. John 16, 33, Jesus, I've said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. Here's what Jesus said. In this world you will have trouble. He said this, but take heart because I have overcome the world. See, this is what's cool. When you're on the right battlefield, one of the 
the coolest things and it brings peace is that the battle's already won. <laughs> the battle's already won, right? On, on God's battlefield. Jesus, I, I, I've overcome the world. I've already done this. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the Apostle Paul, the same that wrote Ephesians, he's actually kind of responding because this stuff in 6, 12 is kind of, man, it scares some people, right? And this isn't Halloween stuff and haunted house stuff. That stuff is just, that's of the evil one to create confusion because Paul's talking about the real stuff. We don't struggle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, and authorities. Satan and his followers who want to destroy your home, who want to destroy your family. That's why it puts, Paul puts family in here, and then he puts job relationships in here, and then he puts this in about, hey, don't forget what the real world is. The real world is not your battle with flesh and blood. It's you fighting that battle with God with you and knowing what battlefield you're on. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So, you know what? So in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, this is what Paul says. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Amen. <laughs> so Paul said that Ephesians stuff, that stuff that's in Ephesians is crazy <laughs> stuff. And, uh, it's me Paul's saying the battle's won. We fight with the weapons that God gives us, right? That's the full armor of God that Paul goes into in Ephesians, right? We'll deal with that a little bit next week. But uh, he, he's, uh, he's, he said, and they demolished the strongholds. That's what Mike was praying for his kids. Mike was saying about his kids. I know I've got to play my part as a dad. I know I've got to do what I do. I know I've got to be responsible. I've got to do it. And Michael's doing it. But I also know that the battle's not here. It's there. And that's the Word of God. So one of the things you see, because I don't want to go into all the tools and everything else. How do you know? You begin to, you came in here tired, exhausted, and God's saying to you today, you know what? You're fighting a bunch of battles on the wrong battlefield. You're fighting against your spouse. You're fighting against your kids. You're fighting against people at work. You're fighting against this. You're fighting against that. You're fighting all this circumstance. <laughs> Gary, what you guys are going through is a circumstance. Because you don't even know the bad guys. It's a circumstance. Fight. And I'm not saying we ain't got to be involved. I'm just saying that we know where the battle is. We make sure we're on the right battlefield by going to prayer, going to the Word of God. God brings peace in those situations, and Satan can't have our relationships and stuff to destroy them and ruin them, because that's what he wants to do, is destroy the mess up. Mostly he wants to do that because it makes God look bad. <laughs> we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You have principalities and powers of the dark world. Corey Ten Boom, she said this one time, It's a poor soldier indeed who does not recognize the real enemy. The key to victory in both natural and supernatural warfare is to clearly identify the real enemy and to understand the character and methods. <laughs> the battle's not here. I'm only talking to you from experience. It'll tire you out. <laughs> It comes with no peace. It's filled with anxiety, anger, frustration, and brokenness. The right battlefield, which is going to God, trusting in God, leads to peace and wholeness in our lives. All God wants us to do today, I'm going to, I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. We're going to all stand in a moment. While I'm praying, some of you need to say, God, I've been on the wrong battlefield. I'm not experiencing peace, and I'm filled with anxiety and brokenness. And I confess to you today that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and I don't want to go there. This week, my battles, you know what I've been doing this week while I've been working on this sermon? This week has been helpful for me. I don't know about you. I started into a situation with a person or a circumstance, and it's, it's going a little not good. And I just kind of whisper, I don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of our world. Heavenly Father, be in this moment. Give me grace. Work my attitude. You deal with this. Will you stand with me, please? I'm going to close this in prayer as I do. You just, a whole bunch of us. This is what's cool is, I don't even know if God does. A whole bunch of us need to just go, 
I want to know about you. And I confess, Lord, that I need to, the vow's not here, it's there. Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of your word. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Father, our confession, the bunch are doing it right now, say to you, Father, I've been wrestling against flesh and blood. I've got my hands around the throat of people I love, situations that are not my business, circumstances that I should have trusted in you for, and I'm squeezing the life out of it. Father, right now I confess that I realize that it's the evil one, Satan, his followers who want to destroy me, my life, my friends, my family, my job, everything else. And Father, I'm going to the right battlefield. I'm coming to you. Fill my life with peace, not anxiousness. And with the promise that you're in control of all things and the battle has already been won. <coughs> Father, thank you for this day. We go to be witnesses in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we praise, we praise your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen.